Okay, today we're going to talk a little bit about weak base equilibrium, which if you've seen the weak acid equilibrium is going to look very similar. So if we see here we have a, just a generalized base, this will be a weak base, which means that it doesn't dissociate completely in solution, but when it reacts with water it's still a base, so it forms that hydroxide ion, which is what we would expect. And when the water then donates its proton to the base, then that gives us this Hb plus here, kind of this base plus the proton. So if we're thinking about a Kb expression for this now, remember K is our equilibrium constant. That subscript gives us information about the type of equilibrium that we're looking at. So this would be a base. Then it's still going to have the same format. It's going to be the concentration of our products over the concentration of our reactants. And I'm omitting my water because it's a pure substance, so we can't talk about the concentration of a pure substance. So we're just looking at these ratios. Then the magnitude of my Kb, so the magnitude of this constant, is going to give me information about how strong or weak this base is. If we kind of break down what's happening in this particular reaction, this base then is essentially separating the water into its two component pieces. So we know that water can dissociate, and that is also a process that's in equilibrium. So we can get our hydrogen and our hydroxide. Now in terms of um, an equilibrium constant, we talk about this in terms of our Kw, and that expression is equal to the hydrogen concentration, or hydronium if you're thinking about it in terms of water plus a proton, and that the magnitude of this equilibrium constant is pretty smallish, right? So 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. This is how we get our 14 point pH scale. So remember that it doesn't really like to do this, so it takes something like a weak base to come in and split it apart, because that's essentially what's happening. My base here is reacting with the water, the hydrogen from my water goes to that base, the hydroxide then is left in solution, which is what makes that solution basic. This process, so this is called the auto-ionization of water, right, water that's just splitting into its component pieces, but when that process involves another species, in this case my weak base, then we say that it's a hydrolysis process. Hydrolysis. If you've taken a biology class or if you've seen some biology, then the term lice, like to lice a cell, means to split it apart, or break it apart. So hydro, referring to water, lice, we're splitting it apart. So a hydrolysis process is something like this one, where I have a species that separates water into its component pieces. This is going to be important when we talk about things like common ion effect and solubility, and we talk about the equilibrium of those processes. But we're focusing today on the weak base equilibrium, so let's look at a sample problem here. So if I have a weak base like ammonia, that's my NH3 here, and I react it to equilibrium, here's the Kb that's given. That Kb is pretty small. That means that my denominator is much larger than my numerator. If I write out my equation here, I have ammonia that's reacting with water. And when the water lyses, when it does this hydrolysis, then one of the hydrogens is going to tack on to my ammonia here, giving me the ammonium cation. And I'll have a hydroxide left in solution, which is what makes ammonia basic, right? That hydroxide in solution. So we want to know what the pH is of this particular process. We're given a concentration, so that should trigger an ice box. So when we look at our ice box, we have an initial concentration of our ammonium. We're losing some molar quantity, which gives us that to equilibrium. I'm going to be ignoring my water because it's not part of my equilibrium constant. And I don't start with any of my products. So I'm gaining molar quantities of my each of these guys, which gives me X then. And when I set up my expression for Kb, it's equal to the 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, 
which we know is products over reactants. And again, since that's a small number, that means that this is a relatively weak base. It's going to be equal to my x squared, x times x, to the 0 0.70 times, or, or minus x, sorry. Now let's think about this x right here. If we look at the magnitude of the concentration compared to the magnitude of my equilibrium constant, there's a big enough difference that we can disregard this x, which is kind of nice. And remember, we can do that because of significant figures, right? Because of the precision of our measurements, then by the time I was to factor in an x that's so small, it would round itself out. So we're just going to disregard that to make my math a little bit cleaner, which gives me an x squared that is equal to 1.26 times 10 to the negative fifth. So if we take the square root of both sides, we know that that will give us two answers, right? We have a plus or minus whatever this value is going to be. Plus or minus, this is 3.55 times 10 to the negative third. We know because mathematically I can have a negative number, but physically, because these represent physical quantities, a concentration, I can't have a negative value here. So that gives me an x of 3.55 times 10 to the negative third. But what the heck did I actually solve for? What is x in this case? Why, why did I solve for x? Why does it matter? That should be your question. That should always be the question is why does it matter? And so today it matters because this gives us the concentration at equilibrium of the hydroxide. So that's equal to positive 3.55 times 10 to the negative third. And the hydroxide ion concentration matters because the question is asking about the pH. So I can solve this in a couple different ways. Um, I like to solve for the pOH first, and then you can get the pH from that. So if I take the pOH, that's equal to the negative log of this concentration, which gives you 2.45. Now you'll see I'm playing a little bit fast and loose with sig figs along the way, but I'm rounding my answer here at the end to two significant figures. So we're getting two from our initial concentration and our KB value, and remember that the two after the decimal place are my two significant figures. So if I uh, have this value, that tells me that it's pretty basic, right? So a low pOH value means that it's basic. And we know that there's this relationship between pH and pOH, where the pH plus the pOH is equal to 14. So if I take 14 and I subtract my pOH, then that gives me the pH, which is a scale that we're a little more familiar with, right? We're a little more used to using pH as opposed to pOH. So here's my final value, again with two sig figs, the two sig figs here reflected by the number of decimal places. And again, looking at 11.55, that tells me it's on the basic side of the scale, as the lower pOH told you as well, but maybe it's less familiar to think about things in terms of pOH as opposed to pH. Okay, so that's a little bit about weak base equilibrium, and we'll kind of move on from there.